Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a column selected use case using a new functionality in Oracle Analytics Cloud called the parameters. Column selectors are a wonderful experience for the consumer users to be able to dynamically interact with a control like a filter and pass the selected value to certain visualization definitions. So as a consumer user, when I interact with this filter control and change or select a specific value, the selected value is dynamically passed to the visualization definition. And it's a very nice way for uh, authors to design dashboards than to replicate uh, the same visualizations with different dimensions in play. It provides a very singular view and a unified experience for the consumer users in particular. Here's another example of an overlay chart where the author has exposed certain um, controls on the visualization to change uh, the measure for the left y-axis and the right y-axis. Let me go ahead and change the measure for right y-axis from quantity ordered to profit. You can see that uh, the visualization is getting updated. Now, uh, let me explain how to build a column selector using parameters using a very simple example. Uh, as you see on my canvas here, it's a bar chart under tag cloud, and I have a view by uh, filter control exposed to the consumer user, uh, and changing the value basically passes the selected value to the visualizations. To look into this setup, let's go into the authoring mode of this particular workbook. I will go to visualize. And on this particular canvas, um, on the data panel, we have added a new tab to manage parameters. So let's navigate to the manage parameters tab. And um, within the parameters tab, you see a list of uh, system defined preset parameters and uh, uh, user created custom parameters. One of them is called column selector. Let's go ahead and open up the parameter in edit mode. Um, the parameter definition is simple. It has a name. The data type is set to text and allow multiple values is turned off, meaning that the parameter can accept only one value at any point in time. There is no alias or display override name setup. And the parameter has a list of possible values manually defined by the author. In this case, they have entered order priority, customer segment, city, and product category, all of which are uh, columns available on the data set that I'm working on. And then the initial value is set to order priority in our, in our example. Let's go ahead and cancel this. Uh, and let's now go to step two to map the value selected from this parameter to the specific columns in the data set. To do that, I'm going to go to my calculations um, section of this data panel. Let's open up the my calc and there is a calculation that the author has created. Let's edit the calculation and see that it's a simple case statement that basically references the parameter that the author has created with the default of order priority. And uh, the, the author has in this case mapped the parameter values to the actual column names in the data set, right? So when a city value is selected, then uh, the value is mapped to the city column name on the data set. Similarly, for order priority is mapped to order priority, customer segment to customer segment, uh, else product category, and we end the case statement, right? So let's go ahead and save this um, calculation. So now we've done two things. One is created the parameter that has a list of possible values with the initial value default. And we have used a calculation to map the columns or the values from the parameter to the data set columns. Now it's time for us to connect uh, these to the visualization definition. Let's go to the bar chart and uh, let's see that the user in this case has used the calculation that uh, they have created as the category axis. And similarly for tag cloud, uh, the calculation column selector becomes the category. Um, and um, to complete this whole process um, and make it as an end user control, author has also added a dashboard filter bar on the canvas and they've basically dropped the parameter column selector as a filter control at which point this acts as a filter from an end user perspective, right? So the default value of the parameter, as we saw, was set to order priority. And you can see that uh, the x-axis of the bar chart is now order priority. And the tag cloud is also showing me the cloud for uh, order priority information in this case. Now let's uh, interact with the filter control. Let's change this to city. And notice that when I select city, 
The city value that I selected is now passed on to the calculation that goes through that case statement. That calculation value is then passed as the x-axis value to the bar chart and to the category column of this stack cloud. And uh, the dynamic computation happens at runtime whenever the consumer user changes the filter control value, that value automatically gets passed on to the visualization definition. Now let's also uh, look at a couple of things where you can notice that as I select the values on the parameter, the label names and the title names is also dynamically updated to the selected value. So how do we do that? Let's go to the property panel of the bar chart and notice that I've provided a custom title and I've used a parameter syntax, a very simple syntax at parameter within double quotes, the name of my parameter that I've used for my visualization definition, right? So this allows me to uh, parameterize certain visualization properties such as the title. And uh, in this example, I've also uh, changed the, the X axis or the category axis title to be of the value that the user selects from the parameter. And I've done the same thing for tag cloud as well. So this allows a very seamless experience for the consumer user to be able to interact with certain filter controls on the dashboard and be able to pass that selected values and dynamically update uh, the values from the parameter control uh, onto the visualization definitions in the workbook. Thank you for watching this video.